All right, fifth graders, this is Mr. Combs here, and we are going to be reading today from A True Book, Explorers of North America by Christine Taylor Butler. So, without any further ado, here we go. First, we're going to look at this page, Find the Truth. Everything you are about to read is true, except for one of the sentences on this page. Which one is true? True or false? Christopher Columbus was the first European to set foot on North America. True or false? Spanish explorers search for a city of gold. Find the answer in this book. And so we're going to keep going, and we are going to start on chapter 1. So right here we see this painting shows Christopher Columbus leaving Palos, Spain in 1492. Columbus sailed across the Atlantic hoping to find a trade route to Asia. His three ships were called the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Chapter 1. Europeans Explore the Americas. It took Columbus 70 days to cross about 4,000 miles of the Atlantic Ocean. Every October, Americans gather for parades to honor one of the world's most famous explorers. His name is Christopher Columbus. Some people think Columbus was the first European explorer to reach the Americas, but another explorer beat him by about 500 years. The Vikings are here. Leif Erikson was born in Iceland in the year 970. His family later moved to Greenland. There, he heard stories about unexplored lands to the west. Erikson was a Viking. The Vikings were people from northern Europe who were famous for their sailing skills. Here we see a map, and this is Leif Erikson's route. Erikson took the safest route he could. He stuck to the coast and then crossed the ocean at its narrowest point. Our next photo, or picture, excuse me. This illustration shows Leif Erikson on his voyage to Canada. He took with him a crew of 34 Viking men. Erikson set sail in search of new lands to explore. He landed on the coast of what is now Canada in the year 1000. Erikson named the area Vinland. He built a settlement there. The settlement lasted only a few years. Native Americans had long lived in the area. The Vikings may have left after fighting with the Native Americans. Chapter 2. A Trade Route to Asia Traders used camels and other animals to carry goods from Asia to the Mediterranean Sea. In the 1400s, many European traders traveled to China and India. The Europeans brought silk, bought silk excuse me, and spices in Asia. They brought these goods back to Europe to sell. Here we see a photo right here. These are the ruins of a city in China that was along the Silk Road, or the trade route between Europe and China. The Silk Road to China. The trade route to China was called the Silk Road. Traders faced many dangers such as blazing hot deserts, bandits, and wars. European traders had to travel over land to reach Asia. The trip was thousands of miles long and could take years. They had to cross mountains and deserts. The traders wanted to find a sea route to China. This would make the journey much faster and less expensive. The explorer who discovered this route would become famous and wealthy. We found Asia, or have we? China lies to the east of Europe, so most European explorers looked for east for a sea route. An Italian explorer named Christopher Columbus had a different idea. He wanted to sail west to reach Asia. Many people thought he was crazy. Sailing trips were expensive. Columbus needed to find someone to pay for his trip. King Ferdinand II and Queen Isabella of Spain agreed to give Columbus money. They also gave him three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Okay, here we see a picture. Here King Ferdinand II and Queen Isabella promised Columbus money for his voyage. And so here we have a map of Christopher Columbus's route, okay? That red line is his route, and you can see over there on the right-hand side, he starts from Spain, and he goes all the way over um, to what is now the Bahamas. On August 3rd, 1492, Columbus and his crew set sail. On October 12th, they reached land. Columbus thought he had reached Asia. He sailed back to Spain with the good news. Of course, Columbus did not really sail to Asia. What he found was an island in what is now the Bahamas. The Bahamas is a group of islands near North America. The islands were part of what Europeans began to call the New World. Trying to get to Asia? Again? John Cabot also tried to sail west to find a route to Asia. He thought he could find a shorter route if he headed further to the north than other explorers. Cabot set sail from England in 1497. Like Columbus, he reached land he believed was in Asia. It was really Newfoundland, which is now part of Canada. 
Cabot and his crew began a second journey in 1498. They were never heard from again. Exploring was dangerous. Storms sank ships. Ships got lost because of navigation errors. Sailors ran out of supplies and starved. What happened to Cabot and his crew? No one knows. Here's a photo. In 1997, this replica of John Cabot's ship sailed to Newfoundland 500 years after the original voyage. What is in a name? Columbus thought he had sailed to Asia. Who figured out he was wrong? It was an Italian explorer named Armigo Vespucci. Vespucci explored the southwest coast of South America in 1501. The land was bigger than anyone had thought. Vespucci was convinced that the land was not Asia. Instead, it was a new world. A German mapmaker read about Vespucci's discovery. He made a map of the new lands. He called it America in Vespucci's honor. Obviously, the name stuck. Okay? Before he became an explorer, Amerigo Vespucci liked to collect maps. Right here we see another photo. These are ruins of the Aztec Emperor Montezuma's summer palace outside of Mexico City. Montezuma died in a battle against Spanish invaders in 1520. All right, and so that is the final page for Explorers of North America, chapters one and two. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for listening.